we're back, and we have infiltrated Ronin Jitsu in Las Vegas, Nevada. The objective? To test out Jedi Does Jiu Jitsu's gym. Yeehaw! And to see if I can sign off on this being a good gym, we will be grading the environment in class, roles, and the facility. The class techniques taught at Ronin and 10th Planet couldn't be any more night and day. 10th Planet was all about the wrestling, and Ronin was all about that guard work. Everybody at the gym was super friendly, and you can't have a good ankle guillotine if your guard sucks. So I approve. But to test the rolling of this gym, we had to do every white belt's nightmare. Positional sparring. And to get things started, I ended up going with the smallest guy in the gym. The guy on bottom had to start in quarter guard, and all he had to do was either score or submit to win. Wow, the black belt starts in three quarter mount and just has to score to win. What a challenge. As I wait to see what my opponent would do, he pushes me into half guard, and of course I grab his neck. I start to wiggle my right hand in just in case I can get the one hand to guillotine. But he keeps wiggling his hips so I have to bail on the choke so I don't lose position. As weird as it sounds, having a man in between my legs isn't necessarily rare, but that doesn't mean I want to be here. So I use that same underhook to create pressure so I can start a knee cut pass. But the discount version of Johnny Sins had other plans for me. He was trying to attack my right leg potentially looking for deep half or to come up for a single leg, and my best response was to keep some heavy weight on him by going chest to chest, followed up by the Tyler special of always grabbing the neck no matter what scenario you're in. I even ditched my underhook so I could go two hands in on the guillotine and I was really applying the pressure. But my opponent was so strong that he was able to rotate all the way out and I had to chase him to the turtle. The Gordon Ryan diet of acai is really helping. Now I think I cheated here, because in a later round when I went to Turtle, they told me that I won even though I didn't score any points. But I knew if I tapped him out, he'd have to give me some of his secret sauce. Which didn't take long as I pulled into his back and I already had my grip around his neck, so I could lock up the rear naked choke, get the tap, and I'll be waiting for my acai in the mail. <laughs> Opponent number 2 was the long lost descendant of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. To win this round, all I had to do was switch my hips, go to butterfly guard, kick my legs out as he overextended, then rock him to sleep like a little baby for the sweep. Now if you've ever wondered how hard you need to work to be a black belt, just look at my posture. And opponent number 3 is none other than everybody's favorite, Jedi Does Jiu Jitsu. He starts by pinning my arm down and he's looking for a far side underhook, but I'm pushing against his shoulder so it won't be that easy to grab. I transition to the world's laziest reverse de la Hiva, then make space. We do some lovely hand holding as we're trying to figure out where to go from here. He chooses to lift my leg, but I go for a quick knee pick, although I don't even come up off the mat. As he pushes into my guard, I'm looking for double underhooks so I can get to a body lock. I start to elevate him with my legs, but he puts both hands on the mat, which gives me a lot of space to rotate down towards his leg as I look towards single leg X. I was setting up my ankle lock on Jedi before he fell down, and I got the sweep. And yes, we rolled more together later in the video. I continue my undefeated streak by going for an ankle lock off single leg X, somehow winning by getting the turtle, jumping over a guillotine, hitting a nice shoulder crunch, and even doing the classic guillotine cradle. And for my final opponent to be the champion of the mat and a grand prize of absolutely nothing, I had to go up against a feisty female. She immediately drove her head forward trying to create some devastating pressure. But by using frames and making Elio happy with me once again, I was able to stop her from advancing. She had pretty strong top pressure, so I overhooked her left arm and then I started attacking her right ankle. I started to use this to come up so I could go towards another shoulder crunch sweep, but she decided to stand up which gave me enough space to enter in towards single leg X. I immediately was starting to attack the heel hook, but not wanting to injure anyone, I was going extremely light, not even locking it up. I even moved my legs towards the outside so it could be mostly used for a sweep instead of attacking the heel. If I wanted to finish this, I was already in the right position. My body was blocking her leg from coming inside and pummeling, and I kept my hips in a strong spot so I could always arch down to apply a ton of pressure. I also passed on a knee bar over her right leg because I'm only looking for this sweep to keep it safe. Also, it looks like I'm having more fun than Jedi is. After finally getting the sweep, I was able to be the champion of the mat, which no one cares about other than me. But we can't just test the rolling if we only do positional sparring, so let's look at some real rolling. But first, do you see what both Jedi and me are wearing? We are wearing gear from xmarshall.com who sponsors tons of YouTubers to help us out. Whether it be me, Jordan Teaches Jiu Jitsu, Jeff Chan, or Jedi, they provide us with great looking and long lasting rash guards and other gear. So even if you're not actually getting better Jiu Jitsu, but you want to feel like you are, check out xmarshall.com and go get some wonderful gear from them. Right before the role of Jedi, I received a little bit of extra information. Just FYI, this needs a little sus. Perfect. Target acquired. Right. Jedi starts off quick by putting the pressure on me and trying to push into my butterfly guard. 
He's looking to push my back to the mat by putting both of his hands in my armpits, but I'm continuously grabbing his wrist trying to see how I can adjust him. He looks to use a double overpass, but he puts his head too close to my armpit and I attempt a guillotine. I know Jedi wants to engage in the stand-up for wrestling, but the mat space was not doing us any favors. But for whatever reason, Jedi doesn't want to just push into a guillotine, so I satisfy his request to stand up. Now he attempts to do a single leg off the arm drag, but I'm somewhat of a front head connoisseur. With enough hand peeling and his height, he's able to pull the front head and we can circle back to the mat. Now I was happy to do the wrestling with Jedi, but he showed off his galaxy brain moment. He wanted me to stand up so he could be the one to pull guard and be on bottom. He wasted no time going to De La Hiva and again he was trying an arm drag. Then he applies his Jiu Jitsu 101 by going for a single leg off the arm drag. This puts him into the guillotine once again, but he's pushing against my hip so I can't close the distance. I keep my hips backwards so I can always put pressure on his neck and extend him, but I'm gonna need to snap him again so I can pull him all the way down into mount. Jedi does the correct defense by not fighting the hands but instead fighting my hips. That way I couldn't lock into a strong position and I had to let go of the guillotine, but I was able to circle to his back. Now Jedi might look really strong, but the secret is that I'm like 400 pounds, so once I take his back, there's no way he could be able to hold me up for that long. I pull him to the side and I already have back half as I start to attack the neck. If you normally have your back taken, try and use this sneaky defense by Jedi. <laughs> Never deny your body's natural way to get out of bad positions. Just shit yourself on the mat. But to give revenge for me calling him out, Jedi started working on my leg. As he was trying to straighten my leg for a knee bar, I made sure to turn my hips and keep control over him. Now remember, Jedi told me his right knee was sore, so there's no way I was actually going to attack this, but keep this in mind when you're going for a calf slicer. Jedi is using the left leg to go for the slice, and while this technically could work, you always run the risk of getting knee barred. I could choose to go belly down on his right leg and fully commit to the knee bar for the submission if he wasn't injured. This is why you generally want to calf slice with your legs going out instead of in. It's also at this time that Jedi is not lucky I used the same defense that he used on me, cause uh, that would be a smelly situation. So where do we go from here? I'm in a position with a potential knee bar, but there's no way I'm going to try and injure him. But by extending his leg just far enough, I'm able to wiggle my leg free, escape the calf slicer, and now we're back to wrestling. He shoots in again on a single leg and I put him into another guillotine with from the front head. And just like before, I use this so I can pull him all the way down into mount. But this time I'm able to cling onto his body long enough that I can actually take the top mount position. And I gotta apologize to Jedi for this one. I love to put people in this position from mount where I'm trying to get a waterboarding submission using my rash guard after it's all sweaty. It's definitely not glamorous, but it's always fun to do. He's showing some good signs about pushing my legs away and trying to shrimp to escape, but I've entered into full smother modes. So there's no way this could be fun for Jedi. With enough time, he was making some incremental improvements to his position by first going to his side and pushing my leg, and then trapping me into the quarter guard. But even when he gets to half guard, I have to show him that full smothering strength. Already on that stupid lockdown. <laughs> his labored breathing makes me think that he's going to give birth, but ultimately he ends up surviving to the end of the round. Between doing positional sparring and regular rolling, that's a solid pass in my book. Now as for the facility, mat space is really small for my taste, but you do get weights which I like, and you don't feel like you're going to get ringworm just by staring at the mats. So that's a pass for me. Overall, it was great to go to Jedi's gym and I had a wonderful time here. And if you wanted to see more content that is unedited, check out my Patreon page so you can see more rolls from the same gym.